Hello, Dr. Fryer here. I wanted to share a few concepts with you uh, regarding some of the anatomy and treatment strategies that we employ regarding neck pain. So the first concept I wanted to share with you is the IVF and the facet orientation. So because the way the facets are oriented, let's talk about a right IVF, right? Let's take this one for example, that when you employ this type of a movement, so left rotation will open up the IVF and right rotation will actually close down the IVF. We've got research to support this. Okay, so we know that. We also know that left lateral bending will also open up the IVF. Right? So when it comes to manipulation, for example, if we want to gap open this facet joint, right, we know that we have to orient ourselves on the left side, right, left laterally bend, and right rotate, which will gap open this facet joint. Right? So we're pretty sure that the contralateral side is actually creating the cavitation or the noise generated from manipulation of the cervical spine. Keep in mind too that now that after manipulation, we know that there is increased laxity to the joint. And you can see this by way of looking just as simple as a knuckle joint, metacarpal phalangeal joint. You could see that under this adhesive resistance, it holds its approximation. But as soon as you release it, now we've got increased laxity associated with the joint. And there is anatomical separation of, of the two articular facets. So if we are suspicious of radiculopathy in this facet, or in this IVF here, post manipulation or during the refractory period, you can take advantage of the increased laxity or increased movement of the facet joint, whether it is in left lateral flexion, if we're talking about the right IVF. We can also talk about rotation, right? So we can hold this in left rotation to open up the IVF. And if it's too symptomatic, uh, you may not want to adjust or manipulate the facet joint. You can use distraction and just as well before or after cavitation. Of course, after cavitation, there's going to be increased laxity. So you may be able to access the disc a little bit more. So there's going to be in the refractory period, you can, you can render a little bit more motion with, res with regards to the disc. If it's too symptomatic, you may not want to adjust the facet joint uh, and just render long axis distraction. So a few concepts, right? IVF opens, right? Let's talk about the right IVF opens in, right? Left rotation because of the orientation of the facet joints. After manipulation, there is increased laxity. So you can use that to benefit if you are trying to improve the spacing and the venous return in the IVF. And then also don't forget about the refractory period with regards to the disc, how you can increase the mobility. You have increased mobility after manipulation. So anyways, I hope that's helpful. Some of these concepts have already been taught. Uh, I've consulted with Dr. Panzer in particular. He's been teaching this for several years and I just wanted to bring it to you through the models that I craft.